Babyface, released in 1933, is a pre-code film starring Barbara Stanwyck as Lily Powers, George Brent as Trenholm, Donald Cook as Stevens, Teresa Harris as Chico, and an appearance by a young John Wayne as Jimmy McCoy Jr. The film was directed by Alfred E. Green and written by Daryl F. Zanuck, production head of Warner Brothers, in collaboration with Barbara Stanwyck or Ruby Stevens. The screenplay was adapted by Gene Markey and Catherine Skola, with cinematography by James Van Tress. Babyface is one of my favorite films because it is a story about taking matters into your own hands, using whatever you have available in order to advance in life. Rather than be exploited, be the one benefiting from exploiting yourself. As a pre-code era film, the sexuality on display might have been risque or obscene for the time, but anything sexual that occurs is implied off-screen, although it is clear what is happening. The name of the film was based on the song of the same name, with a version by Warner Brothers star Al Jolson being popular at the time. Baby face, you got the cutest little baby face. There's not another one could take your place, up, oh, baby face. My poor heart is jumping. You should have sat up, oh, baby face. Production of the film was finished in 18 days in late January, costing $187,000, or roughly $3,668,255 when adjusted for inflation. The story was reported to be by Mark Canfield, who was Daryl Zanuck's pseudonym. He sold the story to Warner Brothers for one dollar, as he did not want the image of accepting a lot of money during the Great Depression, especially with salaries currently cut. Babyface opened in New York at the Strand, and in L.A. at the Warner Brothers Hollywood and Downtown Theater. Advertising for the film played up Stanwyck's risque behavior, despite the film being very tame by today's standards. She played the game with everything she had for everything they had, and made it work. A woman without conscience, she used her power over men to get what life denied her, was the pitcher's teaser. to blame my father a swell start you gave me ever since i was 14 months had been nothing but men dirty rotten men and you're lower than any of them i'll hate you as long as i live What could I do? He's my boss and I have to earn my own living. Are you letting me go? I'll need everything I've given you. All your bonds and securities. I can't do it. I have to think of myself. Church folk back in 1933 and some women's organizations made complaint to the Hayes office run by Will H. Hayes, who would go on the following year to set the film industry's moral guidelines for self-censorship by creating the Motion Picture Production Code. Objections were made to the film based on prostitution, and Babyface wasn't the only film to be receiving criticism at the time. So was Bed of Roses, Hold Your Man, and Bondage were also seen as offensive. During a meeting between Daryl Zanuck, Harry Warner, and Will Hayes, Hayes demanded that the offensive scenes in Babyface be changed, while Zanuck insisted on keeping the film as is. Eventually, the argument turned instead to the recent salary cuts being experienced during the Great Depression, resulting in Zanuck's resignation. Before officially leaving the company, Zanuck saw through the first cut of several films, among them Babyface. His resignation did pave the way, however, for Warner to approve the Hayes censorship requests. The result was that the film had several scenes cut, 
lines were changed or dubbed over, and the ending was changed. The new cut was not moralistically grey or grim as was originally intended. Thankfully, in 2004, a copy of the original cut was found at the Library of Congress. Another great part of the film is Teresa Harris's role as Chico, Lily's maid but also a good friend despite the subservient role. Harris got her first break in the 1929 film Thunderbolt, singing Daddy Won't You Please Come Home. Unlike most of her film roles, she is credited in this film, and while like most of her roles she is playing a maid, the portrayal of the relationship between Harris and Stanwyck is one of friendship and sisterhood, which was unique for the time. Harris follows Stanwyck through the film, benefiting from her rise in status. This is significant for a Hollywood production, where typically African Americans were uncredited, didn't have lines, and were more often commodified. With a runtime of 1 hour and 10 minutes, or 1 hour and 15 minutes if you choose to watch the inferior theatrical cut, this is an entertaining film about will to power and the consequences of your choices. Give it a shot.